Hey everybody, it's Sarah here and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, I am starting a new series this summer called the Summer Craft Challenge and as you can see I have just listed 30 prompts to help get you started on your crafting projects this summer. Um, I'm doing this challenge in the month of July but feel free to do it um, anytime and it's really not anything that has to be just done in the summer but today's first prompt is the color red so I will post the um, image again at the end of the video and you can see um, the uh, additional choices that I have made throughout the month to challenge myself to use. Uh, but more importantly, again, it's just to give you ideas on how to get started. Uh, so I went through some of my papers and just picked out um, either bits of randomness in my scrap bin or full sheets of paper that had big pops of red in them. Uh, and again, like I said, I drew from my scraps as well. This was a great opportunity to dive in and use some of those. So I grabbed a paper from the box of crayons, um, Chamel, which is that really abstract, colorful one. And this soft yellow cross-hatched pattern from my stash. And I'm just inking the edges right now. And really, I have no, no idea what I'm doing as far as a design goes, other than to concentrate on the color red. So I'm going to audition a few... Um, ways to to put the paper and then I will ultimately end up adhering it down so that there is a little border on the right and a little border on the left. So I've jumped ahead so that you didn't have to watch me play with the um, placement of my photos, but I'm starting off with four four by six photos. This is of a trip that we took this spring to California and I'm just cutting those down because um, well four by six photos are a lot and when you have them uh, four of them on one paper it uh, it limits your ability to design around it or it allows you to stick within a structure depending on how you want to look at it so I cut the photos down so they are smaller than four by six I want to say they're probably four by four by five um, and I'm going to place them as you saw three down the left side and then one that will overlap the three photos so I'm trying to find some paper to mat those three pictures, and they are of some little creatures that we came across in our excursion to the Santa Barbara Botanical Garden. And I'm auditioning some reds, and what you can't see is that one, they look very similar, but one of them actually has a really small pattern in them, or in it rather, and um, I decided to go for the more plain red. So I'm going to lay my photos out and I've realized in this first process video, uh, going back and watching it again in the editing, I know what I need to do and what I don't need to do going forward and uh, making sure things line up just to the point where I have to cut so much out is ridiculous in the editing process. So um, just know this video has taught me again a lot of what to do and a lot of what not to do. So um, I hope you stick around, apologize for my head, and um, as I go through this process making of videos, um, of if I go through the process of making process videos, um, I hope that you stick with me. So I had decided that I wanted, um, so there's two photos of lizards <laughs> and a photo of some turtles. And I really wanted to separate all the gray by placing that green photo in the center. So I adhered it down. I'm using a new uh, adhesive. It's the uh, Kokuyu. I really like it, um, but it's a really big adhesive. You can see it there on the right. Um, it's very big in my hand, so I'm trying to find the smaller version, but 
I really like it. So uh, putting that photo down and using that adhesive allowed me still time to pull it back up. Um, where if I had used my other roller, I probably would have torn the paper already. I still love my Tombow permanent, but it, um, it makes it permanent pretty quickly. So I've just trimmed down the photo mat, and I really like that, and I'm going to ink the edges because that's what I do, and I've tried to edit it as much as I can so that you don't have to watch me um, ink the edges or pull the backings off of the dimensional adhesives. <laughs> so I'm going to push this photo, this single photo, around for a little while, and I'll come back to it, and then I'll lay it back down, and I'll come back to it. And I'm really just trying to find the placement. It's actually a picture of my daughter who is um, holding up her phone to take a picture of a little lizard that's on a tree. And um, I just, I love the photo that I was able to, to capture that. And so uh, the top photo is of a little lizard looking right at us. And so I just thought it was appropriate. So I'm going to play with this. This is another paper, um, a darker paper with pops of red in it. Again, um, the July 1st prompt is for red. Or I shouldn't even say it's a July prompt. It's just the first of the month prompt for red. And there's red in those little tiny polka dots that's on that navy blue paper. And I believe this is a paper from... One Canoe 2, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll see, it, it reminds me of those colors. Yes, I've just looked at the backing of it. Um, so this is a One Canoe 2 paper. Again, just going to ink it up. I like to make sure that there's not a white edge from a cut side of the paper. It really... Um, for me, it's really distracting when I see that on paper. And, and sometimes it's more distracting than other times, but I notice it a lot when it's a dark, a dark paper, like that navy blue. So I'm just going to adhere the strip of three photos down there. And I'm really liking the way this is coming about. And I've decided that I really want to bring more red in because, as I stated before, that is the prompt for, um, for the first. And earlier in my preparation of making this layout, I had gone through and pulled out from various sticker sheets and kits elements of red. And you can see them in the little, or actually um, stuck to the little dish wrapped around the top um, up there on this, this, the left part of my screen. And that's just so that I'm not having to look through all of my stash while I'm creating. And I will say, after this page that I did, I went on and made two more, and I cannot believe how quickly they went. This page took me, in real time, uh, just under two hours to make. And as you can see, this video is about an hour. So I, I tried to edit it, it down, and I'm going to get better. Uh, I, would, I like watching longer process videos, so I hope there's a place um, here, I'm sure there is, <laughs> on YouTube for other people to watch longer process videos. So... This is a long one, and I don't know that going forward I want them all to be this long, but um, for the sake of getting this posted in time for my little challenge to start, I thought I would just keep it where it is. So I'm mounting this picture, again, of my daughter taking a picture of the lizard on this red um, piece of paper. This is actually from an old little kit, an old paper pad. It's actually baby girl themed paper and on one side is very baby and on the other side is this really perfect red to complement the other shades of red that I will be adding to this page as we go. So I'm a huge Chamel fan. I love her bright pops of color and I especially love these cut apart sheets. And so I am going to dive right in and cut apart this red and white polka dot strip. 
and I'm going to play around with it for a little bit to figure out where I want it. Again, I know I want it because I want that pop of red, but I'm not exactly sure where I want to place it. So I will fiddle and I will try many options vertically, then I'll try it horizontally, thinking that maybe it will be a way to anchor that photo to the page. And then I decide, you know what? No, I don't need an anchor. <laughs> the anchor will be it holding on. Because I do plan to overlap, as you've been seeing, that focal picture of my daughter will be overlapping that strip of photos to the left. I love inking the edges of, of my paper. I think it really adds a little touch that um, I notice when I don't, but I'm curious if other people <laughs> still ink their edges. So uh, let me know in the comments below if you are an inker or a non-inker or if there are just times that you ink. I know when I'm on um, deadlines for things, I tend not to, but if I'm truly crafting the way that is my style, I, I definitely am an inker. And I use the, as you can see, the Distress ink. I'm trying to see what color it is, see if it's on my desk. I think it's pumice stone. And I just have a little dedicated um, sponge and an applicator and uh, sometimes if I need it to be a little less I don't want to say dingy um, but there have been times that I have inked a, a blue with that color and I have I've not really appreciated it sometimes I'll pull in a light blue distress ink to do the edges of a blue but but usually I don't take that much time again it's just to to kind of clean up dark edges and to add a little pop um, to the lighter papers so uh, in going through the sticker sheets and whatnot in my stash I pulled out this word adventure it's a sticker from I believe an Echo Park travel, I'm sorry, a Simple Stories travel sticker sheet. And um, I thought I would really like to work that word into my title. And so going through the little pile of bits and pieces that I have there off to the left, and some of them will make their way onto this layout, and some of them will be saved for another project. So I kept looking at this thinking, all right, well, I don't want my, my title just to be floating. And I really need to find a place where I'm going to be able to journal. And while it's not a lengthy story that I want to tell because this layout will be going into my album uh, chronologically uh, during the, this vacation. So this is just one layout of that vacation that we took. And so it's really just to talk about the fun little creatures that we met along the way um, while we were at the Botanical Garden. And so, again, not a super lengthy story, but I did want a place that was a dedicated space for me to write. And this paper is perfect. So this comes from the Box of Crayons paper pad from Chamel. And it is a rainbow striped, so perfect for writing. The lines are the perfect width apart and adds another, another pop of color without, um, you know, being in competition with the rest of the layout. So I have not adhered that... Um, that I'm going to call it a text box to the layout yet because I'm not sure if I want to pop it up. Uh, but in the meantime, when I don't know what to do, much like a lot of you, I move on to something else. So I found this border sticker that has been in my stash for a while. And with it being red, I thought, you know what, I'm going to add it. And as you can tell, there are a lot of patterns going on on this page. And that's okay. I, I like it. And, and, um, and it's okay if you don't. <laughs> it will be going in my book. 
Uh, but I do like to experiment with, um, you know, how many, <laughs> how many pattern papers I can add to a layout. And then I found this green border sticker, and it is a perfect match for that olivey light green that is in that um, geometric pattern that I've used for my background. And it really matches um, the little green dots that are also in that um, navy blue mat. And so I thought the, the red border sticker was really blending in with that geometric pattern paper. And so I thought just to give it a little separation, I would add that green sticker. And there you can kind of see. In putting that green sticker border sticker there, it really um, allowed that red, red to pop up. So I had this little cutoff bit from the text box where my picture is. And so I thought, you know what, rather than throw it away or add it to my scrap bin, I will find a way to work it on my page. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that adhesive, a lot of people have been talking about and um, I really, really like it. I just got it, it arrived, um, I ordered it from Amazon and um, I love it. Love how I still have the ability to, to pull it off even after, geez, I want to say 20 minutes, half hour, I was still able to pull stuff off and, you know, it not tear my paper. But this uh, holder is, is quite big and I, I have very large hands. I am not a small petite girl by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and it's even big for me. And you can see the size difference in my little Tombow up there, almost out of the frame there on the right. And it's it's considerably larger, but I love the adhesive. So I just have to look to see if they have a smaller version of this because I do really like it. So I think in all my jabbering, I noticed that I adhered my picture down on that journaling square, but I don't think I've adhered it to the paper yet. And I'm just looking to see if there are other elements that I want to layer beneath and or cut out and use to embellish around. Um, really, this is how the, um, the layout will will be structured, the three photos down the side and the one photo there on the right and the rest of the, the layout will really come together with little embellishments. It pains me to cut through branding strips that have um, a unique border on, the, on one side. I have a drawer full of them. That's actually one of the challenges, or prompts rather, um, this month is to use those branding strips. So. I plan to, to get them out of hiding or out of hoarding and to get them on a page in some way. So that's a little cut apart that says, hello, lovely. And that is what I was actually calling those little creatures as they, they're not creatures, they're little lizards or chameleons um, as we were coming across them. So I'm just looking at where to place that little pop of pink. Now there is not pink in any of the other elements that I brought into the layout, but it had that beautiful red lettering. And you really can't tell with the completed layout that there isn't pink. So I'm just going to ignore the fact <laughs> that there's no other pink on the layout other than that one little spot because I really, in, in looking at it right now in real life, it does not stand out as an element of, of oh, wow, she's she just slapped something down there. Um, so I, I don't mind. <laughs> now this is the Glitter Girl uh, cut apart sheet from Chamel's, um, geez, three, four collections ago. And I saw this little red camera there. And so I'm going to cut it out 
and it too will be an embellishment that I push around for a while. But I really do like where all the little bits and pieces end up. And I love that I was really able to utilize red without it being too red. Because I don't mind red. In fact, I quite like collections with red in them. And so I don't find it a hard color to use. I know some people do. I don't know that I would use a lot of um, mixed media with red. I do know that that starts to look like a, you know, maybe a horror movie, um, you know, as far as it looking like blood or something. So I don't do a lot of that, even when I do use mixed media, but I, I am a, a huge fan of the color red. So I've tucked that little piece, that Hello Lovely, and while it is going to land there eventually, it will be, it will not be tucked in um, underneath those, those layers. So as you see, I found the little chameleon in the Box of Crayons sticker sheet from Chamel, and I am jazzed to use that. Um, I was also thrilled that I still had on hand the pattern paper. The only problem was, and this I guess is a spoiler alert for later, I did not get a chance to use that pattern paper because all the little chameleons are going in the same direction and I really needed one of them to be looking to the right. And so I, I decided to hold on to that paper. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of other opportunities, whether it's, you know, we meet little lizards again or just, you know, a fun, colorful paper to use. It will get it will be um, part of my my scrapbook, I'm sure, at, at some point. So I'm just flipping through. This is a really old sticker sheet that um, was given to me in a big box of stuff people were just getting rid of. And the colors worked perfectly. So that really limey green and the pops of red. And while you see me flip through it and then put it off to the side, I will be bringing little elements from that sheet to, to my layout. So in thinking of what I wanted to do as a title, I knew I wanted that word adventure on there. And I thought, you know what, what's another great way to bring red to the layout? And I thought ink. So I am going to stamp out a title. I am laying out these letters. Um, they are from a company called Stamps of Life or Stamps from Life, Stamps of Life. I'll show it to you guys um, at the end. I'll You'll, you'll see it when I, when I hold it up. I purchased these stamps at the um, expo, scrapbooking expo, this past Mother's Day. And um, sorry for my, my head, but you know you got to get right over in order to see it. They stamp like a dream. I love these stamps. Really great quality. I believe she is a kit club of some sort. Um, definitely stamping. Um, just showing you that I use Stampin' Up's Real Red to add that title. So my title is going to read Animal Adventure. And yeah, back to those stamps. They're just really, they're a really great quality. And um, while I only purchased those alphabets, she has adorable images and, and many other, many other um, sets you can choose from. So I thought that it would be too flat because right now everything is pretty flat to my page. So um, I have put on little tiny uh, dimensionals and or foam squares, whatever you want to call them. And... Um, and I'm just strategically placing them on the letters because the, the title does have some cutouts and obviously I don't want the adhesive to show. So I have either strategically placed them or I have cut some smaller 
uh, to, to fit the word. So I've got those on there and I am going to, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Maybe changing the movie out that I was watching. But eventually I'm going to come back and I will remove that adhesive. But I guess in the meantime, I can share with you There we go. So I am now placing that title down and I want it to overlap. And I didn't notice it at the time, but this word, as you can see, the word adventure is very, um, it, it is not straight, but that's how the word itself is. The sticker, I should say. It may drive me crazy. There you go, Stamps of Life is the company. And the artist's first name is Stephanie, and I couldn't catch the last name. But anyway, back to the sticker. It may drive me crazy to where I'm going to have to cut the A off and, and reline it up. Um, again, it's how the sticker is. It, it's, you know, made that way to look, you know, like there's movement, but it might be a little too movementy for me. Or I might just realize, you know what, I enjoyed the process of making this page, the story's told, it's done, and just leave it alone. <laughs> so now I'm writing my journaling, and again, as I stated, I just kept it pretty simple. It just says, what a joy to walk around the garden and come across these sweet little creatures. So many to look at, and boy, were those chameleons fast. And they were. <laughs> Turtles, not so much. And so I am just um, trying to figure out how to spell the word, word chameleon. And uh, I did it. I loved it. It was, it was fun during this scrapbooking um, time that I was in my craft room. My husband was in there with me and he was working on a project. And I don't normally have company <laughs> with me when I'm in my my craft space but it was it was really nice I liked having him there so I told him he could come back <laughs> so he was the one helping me smell, spell chameleon so as you can see I'm pushing this piece around um, and I decide I know exactly where that little chameleon can go. And he is going to hold on to the back end of that word, adventure. So while the theme of the project is red, um, you'll see that I've added quite a few pops of green to go along with it. And that is because... As I'm sure you know, green is the complementary color of red. They are opposite on the color wheel. And so when I was placing my red around, I thought, well, what's going to make the red really stand out, especially against a lot of these patterns? And to me, it was to add the complementary color of green. So just like with that border strip sticker, where the red kind of blended into that background, I added that green sticker and it really made that red pop against it. And so that's, um, that's why that green is really being played up as well. Those are little puffy heart stickers from Chamel's, I want to say, Head in the Clouds collection. And they will get, uh, those green ones will get used. So now I'm starting to work on this little area up at the top. And I will be honest, I struggled. <laughs> I don't normally spend this much time on an area. So I don't know if it was just knowing that I was being recorded or, or, or what it was. But it is, it should have just really been left alone but I decided that, you know, nope, I committed and um, I'm going to follow through and I'm going to keep adding stuff. And I do. 
And I will say, in looking at it now, I'm not, I'm not disgusted <laughs> with, with how it turned out. It just, for what it is, it took me a long time to get there. And as you will see in the final product, it was, <laughs> it didn't need to be that, that, that much work. So I'm just grabbing the little bits of pieces that I have put in that little tray. I had some clouds that were uh, from a little punch-out sheet in a close-to-my-heart kit, uh, scrapbooking kit that I received. And I'm just kind of going through those bits. You can see there's a lot of little red stickers and pops of green there. And the majority of those will be used. Uh, but there are a couple that just... Um, I just pulled out just to have them and they they'll go back into my stash so these are some little red flowers that I'm going to stick down here in this corner and this is going to start a cluster and and really I kind of did it backwards I started from the top layer and I will work my way backwards um, tucking little things into layers and really you know building up just a little a little cluster over there. So I realized that um, after this first layout that I did that I needed to mark um, on my mat how far the layout could go down because I did notice that in, in filming this Sometimes my project was was below an area, and while you didn't miss anything, it was still annoying that you couldn't see the whole the whole layout. So I have remedied that for videos going forward. So again, I'm just taking stickers now from these are from Illustrated Faith and some labels. That little label says love, love, love. It's a green on green pattern and I'm just gonna tuck it in there. I inked the edges and, and those labels actually are perforated at the top. So you can either fold them over so that they become an actual working tab um, or you can do what I just did and I'm sure many of you do, um, is rip it in half so you have, have more. That's a little red and white label that will ultimately hold my date. And I'm just kind of taking a look at what I have, chit-chatting with my husband, and we're watching a movie while we, while we do stuff. <laughs> so another pop of red to bring up to the top. I really love these labels from Illustrated Faith. They add just enough color to areas, um, you know, without being too much. So finally, you guys, I'm sticking it down. And it's going to stay there. Now, I'll be honest, I'm still going to push that camera around for a little while. But it, it does make it on. So I'd really made a conscious effort to use what I had pulled out and not to go digging around my stash. Um, you know, to some people, my stash may be huge. To others, it may be small. Uh, to me, it is just right. I have a lot of patterned papers. Um, I'm fortunate I am on the Wild Hair Kits design team, so I do have product coming in once a month that I am able to use. And so while I didn't want to be getting up and down during this time while I was making this, I kind of kept my choices really close by me 
so that um, I used what I had available and did not have to go hunting. Because as we all know, when we start hunting, it's just, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> so these are some adorable little red flower stickers. I want to say they're from an old Pebbles collection. It was a sticker sheet. I actually got them, um, I want to say on sale. And so I don't have any other elements that go with the collection other than these stickers, but these red flowers were perfect. So I'm using, again, little bits of foam to adhere and lift the sticker up. I did not realize how sticky these little black foam uh, bits are. So uh, fortunately, nothing catastrophe-wise happened to it, or you know, when I would try to pull pull them up. But but I think going forward, until I'm really sure that something um, is where I want it, I probably will just keep the <laughs> the backing on. But I do I do love them. I I love the two size two size options that come in one pack. I also got those at the Scrapbook Expo. Do you guys have a scrapbook expo in your area? I love it. They they plan it really well here. I am from um, I'm in Metro Detroit, Michigan, and the scrapbook expo comes the week uh, the weekend of Mother's Day, and so a group of us ladies um, that all craft together uh, twice a month. We um, we took a field trip, <laughs> took off work, and we went to the crafting expo and we did some damage. But it was okay because it was Mother's Day. <laughs> Mother's Day weekend. We didn't go on Mother's Day. So here are some of those flowers that I told you I was going to be using out of that super old sticker sheet. Um, I don't even know the brand uh, of those stickers, but they're, um, you get a whole variety of, of little bits all within that same teal, chartreuse, red and white color scheme. So I had taken one of those flowers and just kind of inked it as best I could and tucked it below the red flower that was already there. And as you can see, it those black little foam dots were not, you know, hard for me to get it up. It it did allow me to get the sticker up, but but they were just a lot stickier than than I thought. So now here's a little red. This is a, a red background with like a white um, lined drawing of a flower. And so I'm just gonna, you know, again, try it out to see where it fits. Good news is, is it doesn't take me long to find where I want to put it. But just to keep things consistent, I still, I like to ink ink it. And on those types of flowers, obviously the only part that's getting the ink are the tips of the petals, and that is okay by me. I don't need every little nook and cranny to be inked. So I'm working on this little cluster down here, and my thought process was that you know, naturally, if you're in the part of the country where you read left to right, your first thought in looking at this page would be to see that top photo there in the left. And then it would draw your eyes, you know, to see the title. So it would draw your eyes through the picture of my daughter because she's in that bright colored shirt. It draws your attention there. And so then it would take your eyes down to the title and the the important bits, which are, you know, obviously the photo and and the journaling. So um, I thought maybe of adding some things in the upper left corner, and then I just decided decided against it. I decided to build those clusters at the top of the photo of my daughter down there in the left corner. 
and then right there uh, with all the journaling. So that will be where my embellishments really are are centralized. That's a Ellie Studio um, branding strip that are little labels, and so that was one of the last ones that I I had that I hadn't used, and it was a perfect complementary green to what I had going. I really thought that's where I was going to put my title, but um, that really just ends up being an anchoring piece for a few of the other elements that I will bring down there to the bottom. So it's starting to come together. I really, I love how it turned out. I love that I was able to incorporate the red prompt. Um, and so when you look at my layout in the book, you're going to see that red. And I like that. These are little word phrase stickers. And this is where, oh, this is where I spend way too much time up in this area. I think it would have probably been a lot easier for me to design around that area if I had had more space. But because it was really like an inch and a half from the top of my photo to the top of the page. It did not afford me a lot of real estate. And so therefore, I think I was just trying to cram too much in that small of a space. So again, when I don't know what to do, I leave that and I go somewhere else. <laughs> So here I'm just inking up another one of those flowers from that sticker book. And I'm going to end up tucking this in some of the layers there on the left hand side. And I love that in the clusters there are different shades of red. And so while there are many elements of red that are on top of each other, they all stand out because they're slightly different shades. So all the same tone, just the different different shades of it. So we have that red flower that's slightly lighter than two of the other flowers that have have already been there or have already been placed. So I like that. I like that I was able to get more red in there by using different different tones and different I'm uh, sorry same tone different shades so I found another little green flower and I'm going to pop that into that left side as well and as I said before I had pulled a bunch of you know, die cuts and stickers ahead of time. And what I had forgotten was my husband has made me this contraption for to hold my, my video camera, obviously ab above me. And there are poles that hang that it's like a tabletop, really. Anyway, the legs that my camera is on it's essentially a tripod. Let's just call it a tripod. So I stuck stickers to the tripod legs thinking, well, they're eye level. Of course, I'm going to remember that they're here. And I didn't until near the very end, which I'm super happy that I remembered they were there because I think they're going to add just the punch of color, just the punch of green um, that I need to bring all of these little clusters together. So here I found a little turtle in a Jen Hadfield um, sticker sheet. And I was very happy because I didn't want it just to be lizards or chameleons that were on the page. So I was happy that I was able to find a little turtle. So 
he's gonna go up there. See, those things are sticky. They like do not want to come off your hand. So I know where I want to put him. I want to put him at the end of that green label. Sorry for hitting the camera. But I knew that I might want some things underneath it. And so eventually it will be a clear sticker that I believe I pulled from one of the one of the hashtag sticker books. I think it was the um, Chamel hashtag sticker book. I was really surprised that there were red stickers in there because the sheet that I pulled it from was actually deep purples, very mermaidy looking colors with gold foil. And then amongst those stickers, um, they're clear stickers, amongst those were these little red ones that will eventually make their way onto the page. So I'm just putting some little red hearts around the page and I am sticking some little, the little foam adhesive on the back. I don't know what I just did there or who I was waving to. But now I realize I have enough stuff in that cluster down there that I really need to add that camera or it's not going to make it on. Because it's just big enough that it needs some space saved for it. And so... I'm going to put it here. I apologize if you hear our dogs barking. I'm sure there's just something going by or a leaf blowing. So again, just adding height to some of the elements that I am working with, with the foam. Be quiet. just to give things a little bit of height variance. Sorry that you then also have to hear the people yelling at the dogs to stop barking. So here's where I'm using those stickers and I'm just going to tuck it. Like I said, they are clear stickers. So obviously what you put them on top of you will be able to see through the sticker. However, if it was something that was a really busy pattern below, I would have put it on white paper and just cut it out. But because my background is um, very, it almost reads as a solid, it's very tone on tone, um, it worked. That little heart does not make it. It was just a little too big but I really want to get this red floral sticker on because again, it's the perfect pop of red and I just know it would look so cute. There's three sizes. The, the largest one is already on the layout and then that is the one that I just stuck down is the tiniest of the three. And now I'm just Ugh, I'm just messing around with that upper area way too much. And there we go. Home found. I really like how that little bottom cluster is coming together and how it did come together. It makes me... It makes me happy. And then I found these adorable little puffy chameleons on the Box of Crayons puffy sticker sheet. And I believe there were two, a red and a green one. Again, they were all facing the same way, but I really like where 
where they ended. One of them will make their way up to the top. Oh, actually, I think you can already see it. It's a little, the little red one is on the red label sticker. And as we, as I'm sure you know, chameleons change the to be the color of whatever they're on. So if it's a gray rock, they look more gray. If it's something green, they'll be green. Um, so to have a little red chameleon on top of that red label, and then um, this little green chameleon down here, I'm actually going to end up putting on top of this green turtle shell. And so it just ends up working out. I think it was just so cute. I'm very happy. Those little details. So now those two have a home. The one up at the top has a home. And we are cruising. So there's a few other elements that I just keep trying to get on the page. And at some point, I just kind of tap out with it. As you can see, I've pulled, with the exception of the labels, I've pulled everything else off the top of that photo up there. It just wasn't, I just wasn't happy. And again, I'm, I can sit here and lament about what I could have done and what I should have done. The reality is, is the story is told, the memory is documented. Um, but I'm not thrilled <laughs> with how much time I really wasted doing that. So I pulled off a, of a sticker sheet the little phrase that says, Big Yay. And that is actually now going to be the house for the Little Red Chameleon sticker up there. And I really, I really like that. So I know I did not speed this video up, and I will try to do that in my next videos. Um, normally I would not, like I said, normally I would not have uploaded an hour <laughs> process video, but um, due to the timing of this project being launched and me being new to process videos, I was... Um, running into issues with being able to do voiceovers with a sped up video. So my next videos are much shorter and I will, I'll get in a much better routine and a rhythm, but I appreciate you, you sticking with me. Let me know below if you like longer process videos or shorter. As I said, I love watching watching the long videos. Um, I just, I find it relaxing. I don't really watch TV. I, I watch all my crafty, crafty peeps on YouTube. Um, you know, that's, that's my, my viewing, what I, what I watch. So I don't mind things being, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour. Um, I find it relaxing. I figured I would watch that for a TV show and I like the watching this stuff far better, so I don't mind the longer videos, but I would be curious as to what you, you prefer. So I finally found a spot for that word explore, and that is, um, what is that from? That is from a little um, chipboard punch-out sheet from Close to My Heart. It's the same place that, what else did I grab from there? I grabbed something else from that sheet. I can't remember. But that's what it's from. Oh, I know, it was the clouds. Those clouds that I ended up not using up at the top. 
So this is from Allie Edwards, and they were red, so they caught my eye. And I thought I was going to stick this little sticker down there, but then it just looked too deliberate. And um, I decided against it, so um, it does not... It does not find a home. Well, we're coming very close to the end here, so I'm going to put some enamel dots. And I just feel like that is usually what pulls a, a page together. It's usually one of the last things I do. And um, I went through and put all of my enamel dots in rainbow order in this binder. I just took the backings that they were on and adhered them with adhesive onto the tops of page protectors. And I have found this to be a much easier way for me to, to use my enamel dots. So here's where I remember I had those stickers stuck on the tripod legs, which is now why my camera is moving because I'm pulling stickers off. They are little ferns and pieces of foliage that, um, I forget what collection they're from. I think they're from a Jen Hadfield collection, like a summer collection. Um, so yeah, they are green and I moved them around a little bit and then finally found where I wanted to put them. So I'm just adding red enamel dots around the three areas of embellishment up at the top, right there where my where I'm currently at, and then off to the left. And it's just, again, to add another bit of texture, another pop of color, and another way to make those areas all look cohesive. Because while I tried to make sure that each area had repetition, I didn't have enough of everything to be able to do that. So, um, and like I said, the space up at the top was you know, was not conducive to doing that. So um, here's where I'm going to grab some green and I'm just looking to see if there are any specific greens that would work better. And so I found again that chartreuse olivey green. And I really, I really do like the enamel dots. I find it difficult to finish or to call a page finished without having enamel dots on it. Sorry for the camera wobble. So this is coming to a close and I think I'm just gonna move a few little dots around or switch out a red for a green and then the last thing I'm going to do here very shortly is put the date on. So I hope you have enjoyed this process video. I thank you for coming along on this new little adventure of mine. And I would totally appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe before you leave. You can find me on social media at the following um, Instagram, I am uh, Crafty Sarah Yerke, that's Y-E-R-K-E, -E. and here on YouTube, right where you have found me. So I'm just going to place this date here, and then I believe I may do a quick show-off of the page. And put that little enamel dot back there so I could get the stamping done. And then we will be able to call this page finished. Thank you so much for stopping by, you guys. I look forward to seeing you again in my next video.